Apple just updated the MacBook Pro to a new M5 chip, but unfortunately, they forgot about the MacBook Air and it still has the same M4 chip as before. So is the MacBook Air still worth it with its older M4 chip? And is there really that big of a difference between the new M5 and the old M4? Now, yes, full disclaimer, these are not the new products because hey, they look exactly the same. Well, I guess the M4 MacBook Air is the M4 MacBook Air, but I do not have the M5 MacBook Pro yet. But considering we already have leaked benchmarks and the only update on this Mac is a simple chip swap, I can still put together a pretty good buyer's guide on both of these Macs considering you can pre-order the M5 MacBook Pro right now and of course you could buy the M4 MacBook Air. So I will give you the best information I have available right now so you can make an informed purchasing decision on either of these products, okay? Does that sound like a good deal to you? Because it sounds like a good deal to me. And speaking of good deals, there's no sponsor, but I'll get to some good deals later in this video. Can I finally put these down now? Because I've been holding them for like four takes already. Anyway, let's start with the obvious. Does the M5 chip matter? Well. This is actually a pretty impressive year for the M5 chip. Now, overall for CPU performance, you can expect a modest 15% increase over the M4, something we would expect for a year over year upgrade. But this is the fastest single core performance ever on any Mac, which is kind of crazy impressive. And it is the only Mac where you can get this faster single core performance. And the multi-core performance is above the old M3 Pro chip and approaching the M3 Max chip territory. So this thing, even though it's using a base level M5 chip, it is a powerhouse that is going to be great for a lot of pro workflows. However, the GPU is where the real upgrade is on the M5. It has a 32% increase in performance over the M4. Now these gains obviously will be important for workloads that use GPU related tasks. So things like rendering video, uh, doing a 3D project, gaming. But the real impressive thing about this chip for the GPU is that it is paired with dedicated neural accelerators, which really bump up the AI compute performance on the new M5. This can now reach up to four times peak GPU compute power over last year's M4. So for someone working in the AI field, these could really lead to some substantial performance improvements. And with the M5 getting 153 gigabytes of memory bandwidth compared to the M4's 120 20 gigabytes, this unified memory architecture can run larger AI models on device. Uh, yeah, that all sounds impressive, right? That all sounds good, but you gotta be honest with yourself. Are you doing any of these tasks that can actually take advantage of this faster GPU? Are you running local AI models? Are you playing games? Are you editing video? And if the answer to any of these tasks is no, then the M4 chip in the MacBook Air, well, it's still plenty fast enough for most people, and you're really not going to see a major perceived difference in speed between the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro for most daily tasks. So things like opening apps, word processing, spreadsheets, web browsing, watching videos, video calls, all that stuff, right? All the stuff that normal people do, the performance difference is not gonna be that major on the M5 because the M4 is already great and the M1 was already great. Like these laptops are so overpowered for those basic tasks at this point. But performance isn't the only difference between these laptops. And actually, these next categories are probably more important for most customers. So the first one is price. Listen, if the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro were the same price, I would obviously tell you to just get the Pro, but they're not. The MacBook Air, it costs $1,000, whereas the MacBook Pro is $1,600. That is a $600 increase over the Air. Now, both models do start with the same 16 gigabytes of memory. However, the Pro does start with more storage at 512 gigabytes, whereas the Air has a pretty small drive at 256 gigabytes. And yeah, that's pretty low for a computer. I would usually recommend most users step up to at least a 512 gigabyte drive. So if you take my recommendation on the Air, that would push the price up to $1,200, which now puts both of these computers at just a $400 difference. That is if you're buying from Apple. You see, one of the advantages about buying an older computer like the M4 MacBook Air right now is that you can buy them from a third-party site like Amazon, affiliate link in the description. But, but seriously, the 512 gigabyte version, which I recommend, is currently $1,000 on Amazon, bringing the price difference back down to $600 and making the M4 Air a really good value for this price point. Either way, take my advice or don't take my advice. And if you don't take my advice, well, shame on you. I give good advice, but uh, yeah. Either way, if you pick up the MacBook Pro, you're gonna be spending more money. So what is 
your money getting you besides just faster performance? Well, this year actually, you're going to be getting two times faster storage than the MacBook Air, at least according to Apple. So for the Air, you can expect around 3000 read or write speeds. Whereas on the Pro, if they're two times faster, they should be around 6000 read or write speed, which could actually be like a bigger perceived performance benefit than switching from the M4 to the M5. Like if you are constantly like copying over like large files or even like opening apps, like it's a quite a bit faster on that disk drive speed. On top of that, the M5 MacBook Pro can also be configured to a new four terabyte option. So you can get more storage on the MacBook Pro, but that's not free. If you get the four terabyte option, be prepared to spend a lot of money. Okay, so the M5 MacBook Pro has a faster chip. It has faster storage. Does that make it alone worth $600 more than the MacBook Air? Well, I would obviously say no, but then again, the chip and the storage speeds aren't the only differences between these laptops. And honestly, the big differences have nothing to do with the chips. Of all the M4 MacBook Air, we gotta give it credit, it is thinner and lighter and a little bit more portable than the MacBook Pro. But it also has a smaller 13.6 inch display compared to the bigger 14.2 inch display on the MacBook Pro. And to make matters worse, the display quality isn't the same. The M4 Air has a standard LCD display running at 60 Hertz with only 500 nits of brightness. Whereas the MacBook Pro has a mini LED 120 Hertz ProMotion display that has quite a few unique advantages. First of all, the MacBook Pro display, it is much brighter at 1000 nits of full screen brightness. And it also has a $150 optional nano texture display option, which will greatly reduce glares from brighter light sources. Secondly, this is an HDR display that can get up to 1600 nits of peak brightness. That would give you more dynamic range when viewing HDR content. And on top of that, because the mini LED display can turn the backlighting zones on or off, it can create more contrast on the MacBook's display, giving you better black levels. And thanks to the 120 Hertz refresh rate, it also looks much smoother than the MacBook Airs and provides smoother looking gameplay, provided that your game can run at frame rates above 60. Now, the better display is also paired with a set of better speakers, and the MacBook Pro speakers just have much better audio quality than the Airs. They get louder, they're clearer, and they have a lot more bass. In fact, this combination of the better display and the better speakers is one of the primary reasons you would pick up the MacBook Pro over the Air even if you don't care about the performance advantage. But another reason why you would pick the Pro over the Air is the better port selection. You have a much wider array of ports here. You have an SD card slot, an HDMI port, a headphone jack, as well as three, count them, three Thunderbolt 4 ports and the MagSafe charging port. The Air, well, it does get you that MagSafe charging port. It does get you that headphone jack, but yeah, only two of these Thunderbolt USB-C ports and nothing else. And, and they aren't even on like both sides, which is sometimes annoying when you're charging with USB-C on one side. It's nice that you have them on both sides with the MacBook Pro. But other than that, I mean, both of these laptops have really good build qualities. They're both made from aluminum. They both have the same front facing center stage camera. They both have the same haptic trackpad and they both have the same keyboard. So the only other difference design wise is the color choices, which yes, I do think the Air has some better color options. They have the sky blue color as well as midnight, silver and gold. Whereas the MacBook Pro well, it only comes in silver or space black. Also, I guess battery life is better on the MacBook Pro. It has a bigger battery in it, which Apple rates for 24 hours of usage. Whereas the MacBook Air, well, sadly it only gets 18 hours of battery life. I mean, they both have pretty good battery life. They should both get you through a day, no problem. Now, if you are the type of user who is only buying the MacBook Pro for something like the better display or the additional ports, and you don't care as much about performance, well, my honest recommendation would be to check out a deal on Amazon once again, because the M4 MacBook Pro is $1,400 as of the making of this video. That's only $200 away from that 512 gigabyte configuration of the Air, if you're buying it from Apple, of course. So yeah, if you want the display, the speakers, the ports of the MacBook Pro, and you don't care about performance, Again, check out a third party site where you can find the older models. That's always a great option. But okay, the reason you clicked on this video, the primary question you have is, should I get an M5 MacBook Pro or should I get the M4 MacBook Air? And my honest advice 
is yes, people always want the newest thing. They want the fastest chip and they hate paying for a product that they perceive as old. So when you have an M5 Mac out, chances are you're not gonna wanna buy the M4 version. However, I think that's the wrong mindset because if you can't take advantage of the faster M5 chip, then by buying a Pro, you're spending more money on a laptop that you really won't see any perceived benefits from, at least from performance. So I wouldn't look at the Air as old, but I would also be smart about it. Use my advice, if you're getting the Air, don't get it directly from Apple, because if you go to Amazon or Best Buy or some other third-party site like that where you can find a deal, you can probably find it on sale. And that is always one of the best advantages about buying an older product. So take advantage of it. Do not pay full price for the M4 MacBook Air because this is still a great laptop and you can get it at an even better value than before. With that being said, the M5 MacBook Pro, it is going to be faster, especially with GPU and AI related tasks. And it is a mini powerhouse that is approaching performance from what we used to expect on the M3 Pro chip on the $2,000 model. So if you need power around this lower price point, then the M5 MacBook Pro seems like a nice spec bump. And on top of that, if you really care about the display, the speakers, and you want more ports, well, this is the laptop for you or it's older M4 version, I guess. But that is my advice around buying the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro. There is no wrong answer. There's just a better way to go about it. All right, I really hope you found this video helpful and I hope I gave you good advice. If I did, show your appreciation by leaving a like, subscribe for more, and I will catch you all in the next one.